Hello. And the chat is now working. That's always good. Hello. Right then. So. We are joined once again by the fluffy research assistant who seems to consider aiding France to be his, his priority. I have tried to have a conversation with him and pointed out that he is actually born. He, whilst he might be a poodle, he was actually born in Devon. And therefore, in theory, he should be on the side of at least the Devonian pirates. But currently, he's just deciding to sleep. So, perhaps, perhaps today, perhaps today, he doesn't decide that he must aid the French. Now, I do realise I'm starting, I think, a little bit late. But that's because I was getting water bowls and sorting out fluffs. So I do apologise for that one. Right, let's see. What are we doing in over here? We're at peace with them, we're at peace with them, so we are at war with someone. Who is at war with? Peace, um, peace with France. I'm at war with Spain and America and the Ottoman Empire. The Ottoman Empire are there and not really much problem for me, so I will ignore that one. Spain are a bit more of a problem. America is a much greater problem. America to America. Right then. Where do I have armies to cause you most trouble and strife? Um, that's... I'm all of that now. Oh, hello. I think I have an army heading across. Yes, you will go to there, pick up more troops, and head up to start attacking from the south. I have not enough troop. I have troops here hold to hold the line. I have done severe damage in there, enough to really cause it problems. I'm basically taking it apart, which is fun. That's been rebuilt. That's got all that. So that's got more troops than there. But the thing is, can I reinforce him? I can reinforce him. And that will be quite useful, because if I can reinforce him, then I have an even stronger army sitting here. And where can I do it? What can I do? Well, I can do something. This now has nothing in it, so it's got nothing of absolute value at all. So I will remove these troops to there. And that means I now have no one sitting in Philadelphia which should make it very attractive. But I have still I have destroyed pretty much everything of value here. So taking it by the enemy is going to be blooming stupid. And I'm going to start going down Maryland and then to Williamsburg. Because I do not like them having a naval hospital. Because that allows them to produce actually decent ships. <laughs> and that's what that reminds me, that's their navy. Yes, they've got up they've got second rates, and my navy in this region does not have second rates. My navy in this region is not that large. But I have kicked the Spain out of South America. I have my navy sitting over here. Being rearmed of third rates, that's good. The Spanish have second rates as well, and they have those ships. Okay, that's cute, but that's not ultimately going to cause me too much trouble. Then we go to Europe, and I have to go, where are where are my counterparts here? Um, peace for the Barbaries, that's good. Um, Spanish are everywhere, but... Bam. Let's start wrecking some ports so they can't do anything much with them. I like them all to be in trouble, basically. And all the money he spent on them 
to be, well, pointless. Hello, breast. So I have some troops in here, don't I? And I was going to do something nasty with them. <gasps> Portugal have taken there. Aha, I will maybe have to reinforce them. But first of all, I have to do something nasty. Suitably nasty for me, because, you know, let's be honest. Whilst I'm not the nastiest of all commanders, I, 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 I do have some cunning, cunning plans. Right then. I think we will attack this one. You're not going to help the Spanish as you normally do? Good boy. You finally remembered who gives you the biscuits. But you want a biscuit to remind you of. Okay. Okay. All of you. Um... Bomb catch. This probably won't be fun for it to watch. You see, I hold off building large and third rates till I can get first rates. Because first rates, third rates are worthwhile investing in. Second rates only buy you so much power for a short amount of time. Cute, you are firing like that. But, yeah, you are not going to be around for long. Yeah. Now we have a small army in Spain. And what should we do with that small army in Spain? We shall take it to Madrid. Hello. Yes, you're cute. Complaining, but cute. Okay. I do know you're complaining, but cute. I have met you. You're a poodle. That's your standard modus operandi, is complaining, but cute. Hello. Yes, yes. Very cute. Let's see what an American's gonna do in this next one. Ah. Oh, it's always nice when they start dividing up their armies. It turns out they have more troops there. I've probably just bought Portugal some time. But I can do some nasty. I, I can do a nasty chevaf. Chevache through France, I mean. Oh, hello. Oh, good. Yes, you're, you're cute. You're cute. You want to be... Okay, so the Spanish have counterattacked, so immediately you jump up into my lap. You know, a Papa could get a complex over this. He could. Could get a complex. Yeah, the workers on strike in Pennsylvania. That's good. Okay, he's reinforced there. He's not reinforced there. Hello. I know, I know. You are cute. Yeah. 
yes, let's defeat this troop and man troops in on it as itself. When the enemy has healthily divided his forces, let him. What's the betting they come out and attack me? In which case, I am better off positioning myself up on this hill because that's a stronger defensive position. But I want to be somewhat central, don't I? Or do I want to be over here? No, because they can position themselves up on a higher position than me over here. Whereas over here, I can be, I can be uh, hide my troops just behind the rise. Oh good, that will look like it can hold, and that will definitely be able to hold. Rangers, and now the real point of this self exercise artillery. My theory is they will form up somewhere in the center and start heading towards me, so they will form up somewhere over here. Should be approaching me from roughly this angle over this land. Should be. What do you think? I do love it. When it's the Spanish and the French, you'll be all over me. When it's the Americans, you're just going, nah, beat them up. You are... You pick sides. You know? You have favourites. The fact that I'm not... I, I don't mind that I'm favoured over one side, but I, 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 I do find it funny. Ah, I was right. Uh, that I... Uh, that, you know... Oh, they've positioned themselves slightly further out of the way, so that's a... Actually, they've positioned themselves even worse for dealing with my artillery. They've got actually solid cavalry, which is a problem. Their units are solid units, whereas mine is mostly an infantry army. I've managed to catch them, and hopefully they will manoeuvre themselves into coming to me. Now my 
my theory is here, the cavalry is coming up to try and flank me. And these two exposed units are now in square formation, which should make it more difficult for the cavalry to do so. And hopefully I can reinforce... Hello, Raleigh. It's always nice to have an obviously weak flank. does tend to uh, guide your enemy's actions. Let's see. No, you're not getting more biscuits. You're not allowed more biscuits. No. Just because you demand them doesn't mean you get them. As cute as you are, no. And this is why you hi uh, put your ca your troops just below the rise on the far side, so the enemy artillery can't really aim for them. Hello. This is what you use as your methodology of ex uh, methodology of extortion, isn't it? Oh. Cavalry coming. <coughs> no. No. the problem for them. If they try, they've come forward, they've come all this way, great. But now what do they do? Because this is the weak side. And they know it, but what do they do about it? These guys have formed square. Nice. 
that's great for my artillery, but I'm going to move my infantry down to start attacking you. And you guys are going to stay back here and protect the artillery. Because you're already in bad shape. You guys are going to move forward into here. And cavalry. Going to go and do an attack on them. Right, and we have a general's bodyguard, and we have artillery, and we have another. Gen we have two general's bodyguards over here, and we have artillery. All these things need to be taken out because then this unit becomes a far less effective as a fighting force. trying to defend I think he's trying to defend his artillery with cavalry which is not how it works at all but we'll leave it on one side you have infantry to defend your artillery against cavalry you have cavalry to attack your artillery you have artillery to combat infantry. Whenever you're faced with a mass infantry army, you probably want to have a mass artillery army. If you're faced with a mass cavalry army, you probably need a mass infantry army.
That should have taken out most of the enemy's general force. Structure. Fairly decent victory, but a, I would agree a close victory. Why am I destroying everything in Pennsylvania? Because I'm making it worthless. And if it is worthless, then when they take it, it will be worthless for them. And they will come and take it, because they've got to take Philadelphia, because that's the main place where they can actually get an admiralty. Now, I need to be building some more troops around there, so I can get some troops to reinforce me. And it looks like I'm going to need... Oh, hang on. Let's see this. How much is that? Let's reinforce all of them. That'll do. And... This army, need, uh, army is short. Artillery and cavalry, isn't it? It's short artillery and cavalry. It's got lots of infantry, but it's got frigging no... Um, Where is he withdrawing those getting those troops from? All coming from that, that's good. And I would also like to recruit troops there. And that should do that. Let's see what we can do, shall we? Let's see what we can do. Oh, good lord. It's not going to be, again, a wipe out my entire economy by just blockading one port thing, is it? Because if it has, I'm going to be so annoyed with this game. It probably is. This is what this game mechanic seems to be. Blockade one of my ports and... Hey, uh, your entire economy has just gone bankrupt. No, it hasn't. Next week, there are six other ports it could go to. The reality is the trade would go to the other ports. That's half the trouble with blockading Britain, is it has so many ports for, uh, for its size. Yes, yes. Bankrupt, I know, I know. Workers riot in Pennsylvania, I know. Oh, for goodness sake, you had one ship. One ship. A fifth rate. Right then, we're taking you. This is going to be not a very, very sophisticated methodology, but it's going to work. HMS Oxford, a sick freight. Usually Oxford was actually slightly bigger than that, but okay.
No, General. Important reinforcements. We now have three artillery set sets. Might well go off to Annapolis and continue my um, general destruction of what's going on. That army is, yeah, about equal to that army, so I'm not going to send them in to fight anyone. Basically, need to be building more troops up there. But, of course, don't have any cash, because someone just blockaded a single frigating port. A single frigating port. Right, let's see, what can we do with you guys? We have you here. We have a navy here. Where we have our nearest army of capable force. There. You're definitely a capable army. I will leave you behind, and you, you will go to there. Load in. And Navy, we want to get you to where you can do some good for me. I think doing good for me is basically going to come down to taking over Spanish territory. Let's see what this Spanish fleet does, because they've got well, they have two second rates and a fifth rate, and those, and we have four third rates. So I prefer to avoid battle, but Sir John Jervis has gained an excellent purser. That's good. I have Cuthbert Collingwood and John Jervis out there. Oh, good lord. So I have two blooming senior admirals out here. Maybe. You guys go through to there. Go make me some more money. You gentlemen keep making money plundering Spanish treasure. You plunder Spanish treasure as much as you like. Make them the money. I've been defeated. I have run out of time. It's 1800. My god, it's only 1800. Rebellion in Pennsylvania. That's fine. I'll carry on.
I, Venice are getting a lot of trade out of that. They're getting 2,024 trade from here. And they've got four of those. Something interesting is going on with the mechanics of this game, but we'll leave that to one side. Pennsylvania has rebelled. What they rebelled to become. There's a rebellion. American rebels. Eee, cute. And that's more useful for me. We'll just quickly churn them out. And I think you've got an army of that. So let's go and do this. And we're going to continue the siege, because rather than attacking, because you've got no fortifications, but that did seem rather strange odds. And that didn't really bother me too much because, well, actually, let's go up here and see what's going to be recruitment. That's three turns away. That's really not going to help me much. And two turns away is also going to not help me that much. So I'll sort that out in two turns' time. I will go down here and I will try and fix as many of these troops as I can. while also adding some more troops down here myself. And then I'm going to take those north. And we'll see if we can actually win versus the Americans without actually having to engage in open conflict with their major armies. Just wasn't quick enough conquering. I don't know. I got too caught up in conquering North America instead of just ignoring it and going for the rest of the world. But still, fun game. Let's see, what can we do? We have no fortifications, no defences, nothing at all. Could use this point, but I don't feel like it. No artillery. It's annoying against an infantry army, especially when they're infantry. And I'm infantry. They're not going to hide. Nah. Tempting. 
but no, I won't put them all in kind of thing like that. What I could do is put them in positions where they can hold and cause a lot of trouble. Oh yes. Don't expect to win this battle, mainly because I'm outnumbered quite so much, but there is always the potential that against militia infantry, I manage to do so. But remember, these are not Minutemen. These are not the weakest unit the Americans ever have. Or Firelock Citizenry. Got distracted there, looking at various stats coming up in OBS. Let's see what they're going to do. Let's see what they're going to do. Let's make them walk all the way up to me. It was nice when they have to walk up to me. Four ranks into three ranks. Turn it into slow motion. Hmm. We have you and one unit split off from the main pack. We have three in the main pack. If I could have found a way of getting at that one unit alone, oh, it's four in the main pack. That would probably be useful. But ultimately, might not change the outcome battle, but would have caused a lot more problems for them. Volume of fire will probably be overwhelmingly superior on against me. So let's try and make the things more interesting. You have to think about someone who's just going, right, I'm going to march across the field in line.
there, overextending the li extending line so that they can attack me from multiple sides. There's enough force to get them to attack here and hold them. But was it too much force? Oh, we'll see. To lose. Hopefully we don't lose that many. We probably will we probably lost those both his units. Yep, yep, yep. Right in Navy. Army. Go to oh, that's annoying. Right, we're not four thousand. That's quite useful. That's a useful amount of money. So, we have you two, go to there. You, go to there. Out of general, and you guys can recruit some more troops to you. Now, I think we might as well leave you on the siege for a bit longer because the timing's actually working for me on this occasion. Time is actually working for me, and it's something I should not discount. Because when time is working for me, I should let it work for me. The Mughal Empire has arisen again. Very good. Let them rise. Let's see what happens. I think they'll probably get defeated, but we'll see. We will see. You see, those armies not moving around means that the Americans have to think about these armies. And that's useful for me. I always thought it went on to eighteen fifty, not eighteen hundred. That makes more sense with the steamships, etc. They produce in.
Let's see what we can do. Let's see what we can do. I agree, Pierre. It's magnificent, but it's not war. The charge of light brigade. Mm-hmm. I can't move out of that there. Yeah, they can't do much. I don't know correctly. Do they have artillery? They do. And they've got reinforcements coming up. They're going to be positioned in this area, which is going to be lumpy and bumpy. Their artillery up here, what can they do? Hmm. I think that's enough dead ground to hide my infantry in. Oh. I think it's time to make myself a little fortress. I forgot I could do that. Now, as a rule, I'm never the biggest fan of this. Because it does narrow down your field of fire quite considerably. Which I consider problematic, so I'm not going to do that. Because let's be honest, that's a good field of fire to have. But what I might do, therefore, is... Position that... That there. Does that work, or does that create more problems than help? In that position, it could create more problems than help. Hmm. Let's see what we can do to shape this land to suit our needs. If I do this sort of thing, uh, once I build a position, I'm tied to it, so I need to be able to shore it strong. It's a good position for me. And that position is just a bit hidden off.
Let's see. What can we do? What can we do? That was not helpful artillery. Not helpful at all. Trying to work figure out why the American flag was in the middle of my unit. Interesting scenario for a second there. Oh good lord, cavalry, you're stupid sometimes. Middle 
you guys aren't much better. Why are you in that mode?
I was... Hmm. Good boy. It's amazing, you know, I, I can win battles when you, you don't um, support the enemy. Yep, and battle. And yep, I'll agree with it being a heroic victory. Hello, Jacob. No worries, George. You can hear the sound effects, but no battle effects. I wonder why. What's happening? Uh, okay, right now I've upgraded the desktop, uh, made the desktop audio a bit louder. Not sure why nothing else is working. Hello. Uh, good, good news. I have apparently lost. Well, I won the battle, but I've apparently lost the game. Because apparently it ends in 1800, and I thought it ended in 1800. So I thought I had another 50 years and was doing quite well. And, you know, life happens. And okay, I just played around with the sound. And... I end up having to fight that battle again. I am going to be so annoyed. Right. Cannonball is working. The cannonball is working. The game is at the moment is giving me a spinning clock. Which suggests it's not working. Okay. We waited for long enough. We have tried. I'm going to go to Task Manager and go activate game. Activate. What's up with you? Well, I'm ticking where, clicking where it says it, it is, but it's not letting me go do anything. So, yeah, task manager and restart game. Let's do this the old fashioned way. End task. Bye bye game. I'm going to end up having to refight that battle, aren't I? And I did so well. That's why it's making me refight it. It's basically going, you actually won that. You weren't supposed to win that. How are we doing today? Jacob, George, how are you doing today? How goes life?
How goes all you're up to? And back. Twitch made me watch the whole Wick 4 trailer. Well, I've had some conversations with my good friend Garrus about this, and we've decided that it depends on exactly how... Um, how do I put this politely? Okay, if I'm going to have to end up refighting that battle, I'm going to reinforce that battle. They will probably still attack me, but the thing is that now they have to attack me. They have to go. They have to be quite, you know, inventive to do so. You do the guys doing that. You're doing that. Lots of sieges going on. Let's see what they do this time. Whether they attack me again. This time I have more troops. If they attack me again, I have more troops. That makes my life a tad easier than it was. You went for a ship's. Uh, you went for a Saturday night out in Middlesbrough, Jacob. That's that's not that, that's not good. That's not good. I love Middlesbrough, but it's not now. Um, I would say. Subscribing, I have to reach, I think it's something like 100 subscribers for me to be able to opt out of having... I, I, I'm still trying to figure it out exactly. But I think I have to reach about 100 subscribers for me to be able to opt out so that subscribers don't have to um, watch video, uh, watch adverts. I'm not sure. I'm waiting for Twitch to introduce a Twitch Prime version, you know, like YouTube Prime, where you just pay... And you don't have to see adverts. Oh good, they're attacking me. That makes my life nice and easy. Agreed. And Middlesbrough are lovely, but... In my experience, when you go for a night out in Middlesbrough, and this is speaking as a non-drinker, most of my colleagues managed to get absolutely slaughtered and yeah just absolutely slaughtered now they're gonna be up here I want them to come to me they're attacking me Oh, goody, I've got deployable defences again. <laughs> oh. Seriously, could I build an entire wall across here? Oh, I can! Oh, the things I'm going to be able to do with this. Right then. All you guys go over, um, just sort of go over there. Just be, uh, just be annoying somewhere else, basically. So, I've got free artillery. I can put them up there. That's a pretty interesting fabric, isn't it? Or do I keep them out? Deploy them like that. Hmm. And then do a whole thing around this section. I think that's what I do. 
because nine guns will hold pretty much anyone at bay. And if I stick them about here, or here, then I can stick, right, so, infantry, boom. The artillery will bounce off that, so instead of infantry artillery being able to wipe out my infantry advantage, I will now have the uh, infantry advantage, permanently. Yep, that'll do. They can fire over the top of me without causing any damage. Good. You guys go there, and you three become that. Right then, we will now take you three. We're going to put you in in line formation down here. And it's going to be another case of anti artillery fortifications. And we're going to stick another two. Can anyone hear a dog crying out loud? Nope, I don't want you guys. The artillery position to fire over you, if at all possible. Both of these units look a bit too high up. So, you and you are now combined. You and you are now combined. And you guys are going over here. So no one's coming up the edge of this one. So actually what I will do is combine you and you. I'm going to add you to them. And now we've got another four who we're gonna sort of position. Yep, they can fire straight over them. And... That should keep that nice and secure. Right, so... I want you guys off in here. I want you. Oh, can these? They can also build things. That suddenly makes them even more attractive to me, but in a different position. I wonder if they do that, do they don't become visible. No, they don't. Oh good, I can turn this f little wooded area into an absolute cavalry trap. Oh, I'm having fun now. 
You're carrying Hazel. Yes, that is the wolves. That's not my. That's not my poodle. That is the wolves. I'm not sure why the walls keep coming. The battle is in North America. Is in North America, yes. And basically, I have designed this like I would a siege camp. So, if I was building a siege camp, this is what I would do. I pulled the troops back from the fences I made because then they'd have been in front of my artillery lines and by putting these defences in this position I've just made it more difficult for their infantry to attack because those defences, those very same defences which protect infantry when they're hiding behind them because they are designed as they are, the infantry climb up them and that's going to make them even more exposed to my artillery fire and other things so they're actually useful for me So basically, I have used the outer defences as funnels and the inner defences as extra protection. And I've also freed up basically most of my infantry to be manoeuvre infantry. Which is useful considering I don't have a large amount of cavalry. Now, they are concentrating on this infantry unit. So I'm going to do this with this infantry unit and stick it behind the lee of the hill. If I've got it behind the lee of the hill, as, a tra as was the actual case, that means the artillery can't really concentrate on it. But also means that they have to think about it, because they are a numerically inferior force attacking, attacking a numerically superior force. Now, my covert infantry are back there. They've got horse-drawn artillery, which is going to mean it's faster moving, but it's going to have less of a punch. And basically, I've forced them to... Well, the enemy general's just been killed by artillery fire. Um, that's useful. They basically have eight units of maneuver infantry, and I have eight units of maneuver infantry in position. You're going to come out from your hiding place now and go and torture them from behind. You, my good friend, are going to shrink down to something more appropriately sized. Cavalry are going to go position themselves here. <laughs> and 
And with their artillery repositioning itself. I might as well shift you guys back to there. Artillery. Canister. And now you gentlemen who have been sitting around here doing Fegel. Go and enjoy yourselves doing that. Always good to have bring the firelock arm scissoring, isn't it? Along. I just need to win this battle to win the siege. And yes, there's a lot. Of the, the Americans are sending a rather too many troops to go and fight over here. In fact, they sent their horses and uh, horse and all things, and that's really <coughs> probably made them feel very, very strong and very, very good. But uh, in the reality terms, what it's done is just given the battle to me because it's meant that in this area where their troops are going to have to be decisive, they brought in inferior numbers. Oh, good lord. I think he's done it again. Chemical warfare. Why is it you help the other side all the time? In all your ways. Why? Why, Fluff? Why? I'm fighting the Americans again, yes. It happens, Garrus. How are you doing? Yes, the Americans occasionally come and fight me for... No apparent reason. Oh. You've heard someone here who's a friend, so you decided to get up and say hello. Yes. Garius has arrived, so of course you've jumped up to say hello. The Americans keep... Well, you see, I'd just been, I just finished beating up the Spanish, and the Americans decided that this was the time to attack me. When I was no longer fighting the Spanish. You guys get yourselves information. You're going to anyway. That's good. You gentlemen, attack there. Which cavalry unit do I have that's suffering these appalling losses? Ah, yes. Your unsupported, ca your unsupported cavalry. Well, you're hopefully going to be supported soon. Because hopefully this unit will actually manage to get up to you. I'm both impressed and slightly disturbed they actually made it. But let's form square quickly. And then when their cavalry brass charges in, that should break their cavalry. You get out of square and go deal with him. You get out of square and go deal with him. You get out of square and go deal with him. You get out of square and go deal with him. In fact, you go do this to make, to make sure he's dealt with. Hello, Rangers. You come back. Hello. Yes. Okay. And I just realised, earlier in this game, that this game apparently stops in 1800 instead of 1850. I'm sure it stopped in 1850. 
I was sure I had to 1850. Oh, good lord. They've left horse artillery in range of infantry. Thank you. It's always nice when they... It's always nice when your enemy helps you out. It really is kind of them, because having the uh, horse artillery in range of my infantry was really, really kind. I think I've won, and seeing this is the siege, I don't need to chase them to destroy them. Yeah... That's where I was getting confused. But the thing is... <sighs> this is supposed to... This was, this, when I got it, was the Empire, uh, Gold Edition, so, you know. That's there. Reinforce. I think we will take this one now. Because, honestly, that frees up my troops to go and do other nasty things. And they are going to go do other nasty things. Let's do manoeuvre. You there. You here. And you can sit here quietly behind this line. Cavalry, you are in absolutely pathetic state as normal, so you are going to protect the general. Your entire job, your entire reason for being is keeping the general alive. Are we uh, Are we happy with us? No? Then I don't care. Uh, Rangers, you are going to be what's going to hold various positions together. Because we're just going to have you hopefully the wrong right side of the wall. Anyway, how are you doing today, Garris? How's the ghost life? And you guys are going in here. Let's see what they're going to do. Hmm. Yep, I thought they would probably do something like that. Yeah, this looks pretty darn pathetic. Doing a challenge coin thing for now. Ah. The video for thing is now redone with audio cleared up for a moment. Thank you. And doing challenge going thing for thing now. Thank you. And um, I have the script ready to go for the uh, thing challenge going for thing now. Um, when I have 
when you've sent me those images, I will probably record them first thing tomorrow morning. With that sort of stuff suitably embedded. Oh, they can be grenades. They're just not really sensible, but you know. I'm loving their Alan. I have great respect for their of their of their absolute dedication to their cause. I just don't think they're gonna get much out of it. Very cool. You don't chew cables. Chewing cables is not good for fluffy puppies. Ah, oh. Hello. That I brought that on myself, didn't I? I did. Hello. You're gorgeous. And ever so slightly fluffy. You are. Hello. Good boy. Can I command my troops? I'm, I might have won by 1800 if it hadn't been for the amount of time you spend in my lap. No, you don't agree with that. You do think out of one. You think out of just should have just let the Spanish and French win, and then you could have spent all the time in my lap. Yeah, that's you. That's that, that, that's your main point. Yes, th he did wait till I'd won the battle this time. He's a good boy. Go. You lie down. Lie down. Let's see what we can do. <sighs> Hello. So now we're going to just attack. We're going to attack. Just keep attacking my um, my. You know. Let's go to this army. We'll get rid of Darth Maul Comet's divinity. Definitely. And, um... You can call on some more troops. Always good to have some more troops. So he's got three, six, seven units, and he's laying signature with... About six units. Pretty much five, let's be honest. Now, what was I going to do down here? That's been reinforced. Ah, yes. You. Let's go see what... Oh! Well, I don't know about you, but I think we attack that. I think we definitely attack that. Mainly because it will hopefully, hopefully win us two in one go. <laughs> Mad is he, then I hope you'll bite some of my other generals. Always useful. Always useful. So we have three, six, nine of those. 
take him out. We go for four. Four. Ooh, we've got four sets of rangers. We'll have to see how we can use those best in this battle, because I'm presuming they will come out and attack me. I'm presuming they will come out and attack me. This is interesting terrain to set myself up on. I think probably it's going to be better to set myself up at this end. But, ooh, I'm not 100% sure. That does allow me to far down the valley. Which is quite good for no attacking, but... Yeah. There is also advantage to being positioned so I can quickly run for... Well, I think it's... I think it's better if I quickly run forward because I'm presuming they're going to be... They're in this section. So they're going to want to come towards me. And if I give myself space over here to sort of this point, that's probably not going to help. But this position might help me. It might help me. If you guys just get position in there, and then I put you guys in position up here. <sighs> Artillery. Positioning you is 90% of the battle. The other 10% is luck. Unfortunately, this particular lesson of siegecraft had been forgotten by the time World War One came around. Ooh. see what happens, shall we? Let's see what happens. What do you think they're going to do? I think they're going to come out and fight me. Oh, they've positioned their artillery and everything here. They've got more troops coming in from that direction. But they don't appear to be in a hurry to maneuver to come and engage me. But even with those troops, they are still going to out be outnumbered by me. Are they withdrawing? I think they're withdrawing to their reinforcements. just going to sit there and let me come to them. Well, no then. We will go back. We will let them come to us. Ooh, more troops coming from this direction. 
Charge on a foot. Oh, a general. I do believe a general's arrived. I do declare a general has arrived. That is good. Gives me some of the kill and attack morale. We've got horse artillery coming in. Yep. Right, let's see what we can do. Let's see what they're going to do. They're bringing up all their troops. They're massing all their forces. Nice. They've got their artillery locked in there. So their 12 pounder foot artillery and ain't, ain't moving. So I don't have to worry about those. They have a fixed narrow rate of fire, uh, aim of fire, so if I attack from this side or from out the other side, hope they won't be able to get to, uh, fight me. I think that's what I might be gonna do. Now, the old rule of history is never attack uphill if you can avoid it. Never attack uphill if you can avoid it. But, if your enemy has stretched himself out in a nice long line, don't interrupt him being an idiot and doing it. And sometimes, actually assist him in making him think that that's a good idea. Because the old rule is, March divided, fight concentrated. I have a fluffy poodle in my lap going, hmm, how can I make the Americans win this one? Don't joke, I know you are. Horse artillery are all out on their own, and look, they're stretching infantry out into a nice long line. Which means cavalry can envelop them. Well handled cavalry force could do some mighty big damage here. Shall we fight a cavalry battle for a little while? I think we shall. Let's see how they react to the maneuvering of cavalry. How they should react is not to have all their troops in this long line. But it's going to be interesting when they, even more interesting when they start to see some infantry on the move.
Actually, no, we're not going to do with that. We're not going to be that nice of them. I'm going to leave you in a position where, if I'm not mistaken, the artillery cannot see you. That is good. So the artillery can fire ahead. Can I get tablets? <laughs> It'll be fun if you could. It would be fun if you could. But no, look. They formed a nice, long, straight line. And it's it's wonderful. It's lovely. It's also... At this end, they've got all their cavalry, everything concentrated. And it's a case of, well, what have you got at this end? Nothing. Okay. You've got some horse-mounted artillery. That is not a good unit to have on your end. You have got firelocked arm citadelry. Not good to have on your end. Two units of firelocked arm citadelry. And then you've got the 14th Regiment of Foot. You've got a nice big gap. If you can get cavalry into the right position to hammer into this from all three sides, you will get this to panic, this to panic, this to panic. And then they'll be panicking and going into them. And then when you attack them, they'll probably panic. And you'll get this entire flank taken out. Which is pretty darn realistic. Um... If you're going to be this annoying, I'm going to make you a little bit even lower. So that, you know. Because you seem to be actually trying to walk in front of the enemy artillery. You and you. I'm mistaken. Oh, I was. I am mistaken. You and you. Into a group. And limber up. Because we're going to move you a bit. Oh. Okay. Ah. Oh. Every sodding time. Excuse the French. Every time. And you want a biscuit for that? <sighs> he wants a biscuit for that. So that's in a nice position where they can fire that direction, but if I can go... Can I put my artillery... No, I don't want to expose it that much, honestly. But I do want to put it in a position where they can't fire at me, but I can fire at them. So, if I could get it to here. If I can manage to get my artillery to here. You might be able to do it. You won't. Because you you guys are following close enough to the cavalry line. So you've got this artillery and this infantry position and all this stuff protecting you here. You. You. Move to here. Let's pin them in the center a bit. My cavalry... The cavalry's almost in position and they haven't moved. They haven't done anything. Hey, behave. What is going to happen? I do not know. I don't know. I feel better today than I have done for the last couple of days, I have to admit. Although, I have a feeling 
as my sister's cooking today, I might be ordering a takeaway rather than eating it. Is it me or if I put cavalry there and they haven't reacted? I put infantry there and they haven't reacted. Their entire policy seems to be we are just going to hold our nice long line. Okay, so outlining my battle plan. If I can, I want artillery here to provide cover while I bring these two infantry formations in to attack this side. While I'm attacking this side, I'm going to use the cavalry to attack this side. So I'm going to attack them on each wing. I'm going to ignore the center because there is frankly no point boring about it. Hang on, they're now moving. Finally, what are they going to do? Anything that's going to help them or... No, they're not. Kill. Worst maneuver they could have pulled. They've now broken their line, and they've actually moved their positions into, well, problem. That actually put my cavalry behind them. This is just not good. But they have reacted to my infantry moves. And the fire lock out infantry are gone. And now the cavalry, get out of here. Move, withdraw, withdraw, withdraw. Oh good, there's a nice general coming here. So, that's their firelock infantry and their horse... Artillery gone. And this is going to be one of their generals gone. Thank you, George. Get back. I'm just fixing the sound settings. And there we go. Enemy general fallen. Withdraw, gents. Withdraw. And now they've got an entire flank they have to worry about. You still sure you want to have the artillery positioned there? Right then, let's see, what shall we use you guys for now? You're going to move up to here. The artillery has made it intact. I'm not sure whether to be impressed with my artillery or depressed by it about the Americans. You go secure them now. In fact, I'm going to tell you to run, which is not something I normally do with infantry doing maneuvers, but, you know. Yes, 
This time, run. They keep just keeping to their line. They really want to be in that line formation. They like being in a line. And now they have no artillery, and I have artillery concentrating on them. That's not a good square to be in. Line, gentlemen. And you, gentlemen are going to appear over the hill in a line. And that's going to be fine because there's going to be no... Why were you doing that? Oh, did I click on the wrong one? No. Enemy general's fallen, that's fine. Okay. Stop getting in that rugby scrum. No. Oh, goodness, deal with them. Right. If you have to do it, you have to do it. I maneuvered for as long as I could to keep you guys maneuvering. Advance and fire and take that guy out. I knew I should have left my Hessian with the artillery. You can always rely on the Hessians to look after your artillery. General charge. I want you to get bravery bonuses.
Right then. Now. One, two. Can I take an outsider with me? And I'll take you with me as well. Now, there are times to form out in line of battle. This is one of them. Thylock Armistice reforming the majority of their troops. Hopefully we should take out the artillery quite quickly. And I've got reinforcements coming. Always nice when reinforcements turn up. <sighs> I might have done this a couple of times before over the years. Take one, then take the other. I don't want you killing my uh, your own general, so I'm going to tell you to go in as infantry uh, to uh, stabby stabby. It makes sense occasionally. I'm not surprised the enemy general has fallen. What I'm surprised at is there's any enemy left. Oh, I've now captured all the regions required for the 13, na uh, 13 colonies to join my nation. Dang. Unfortunately, the 13 colonies I don't think e still exist. I think, I, I think they got died out a while back. Now, if I'm lucky, that's pulled the troops out of Paris. If I'm lucky. Yes, welcome back to the British Empire.
<clears throat> I've never saw so many shocking bad hats in my life. Upon entering the House of Commons. <laughs> oh, that is such a Wellesley quote. That is such a Wellesley quote. Right then, so where should we put ourselves? Uh, they're an infantry army versus an infantry army. They're coming to attack me. Not sure why I'm not being able to um, construct any defences, but we'll leave that to one side. It would have been useful to construct the defences, but as it is, I'm going to position myself up on this hill, because I've got nothing else better to do, really. Let's see. It's a besieging army. They're coming out to attack me. So I am on the defensive. I should therefore have been able to put out the defensive fortifications. I'm not sure what I've done with them much, but probably done something. Possibly taking the same position I'm taking now. Or the position over the other side, which I could have actually built with a defensive formation I could have made far stronger than this position. Here comes our American compadres. Attacking in line, as always. Now, what do we have? We have our Firelock Arm Citizenry on this side. I'm going to take the general out and see what I can do with those. Because if I, then they've got two, three, four, five regular units. Militia, militia, any actual line infantry, all militia. Okay. back. Now, in a nicest way, horses can pull miles ahead of infantry, and that's where I'm going to send away. Because then you're out of the way and I don't have to worry about you guys. I think that unit of Firelock Arm Citizenry might be just about to go down.
there you go. Why you? Why are you walking instead of running? I wonder if any of my generals just run away. Oh well. Fire? Fire? At some point, please, fire your guns. Fire, come on. Go on! Fire! Oh, thank the Lord. <sighs> love a duck, love a duck, love a duck, love a duck. I'm, I'm not sure why you've decided to engage in that, but if you have to, engage properly. Going to do it, do it properly. Heroic victory, my blooming general ran away. Hey, by gum. Why? Why? Oh well, carry on. Doing that. Enjoy the enemy raiding. So. 
position that way. That's a big army. Now, that keeps that army penned up in Philadelphia, that army penned up in Niagara, that army is, I'm not sure why that army, oh, the, I can see why that army is sitting there, that army just doesn't want to go anywhere, because frankly that army is not really one uh, wander, wander, wants to wander anywhere, and uh, yeah, we've got a decent army here, but we need to reinforce it, and repair it. When we do, well, we've probably got enough troops sitting around here to start taking this. Let's see. see what we can do about this, because if we can reinforce with that army, that army is those, so they are strong, but they're not in, they can probably take this. They can probably, but uh, we reinforce selectively. We can probably actually hold this position against them. Probably, he says. Probably. Please note, I'm saying probably. And now we have North America. Pretty much we're, play we're playing for all of it. Which one? There's going to be a small nation sitting, sort of... One of the, the, the Plains nations sitting across the going... Um, you appear to be all around us, yes. Under this game's uh, scenario, that means they'll probably try and declare war. Ah, oh, they're attacking me again. Fight the battle. They'll keep attacking me. They keep attacking me. They do keep attacking me. Right then. So again, we have to defend this area, but this time it's snowy. And uh, this time it is absolutely terrible to try and defend because there is nowhere. And can I build defenses? I can't build defenses. So there's no high ground I can give myself. Other than this slight rise.
Militia, militia, fire locking, arm citizenry. Yeah. Why they're advancing out to engage me, I do not know, but they are. So, now, here are some things. Why am I not advancing to engage them? Well, principally because it's going to make their troops tired to come across to me. So, I'm holding lines. Now, admittedly, being aggressive does give you a bit of morale boost. But in my experience, tiredness is more of a problem than morale in t at the beginning of a game. Also, I was one of those people who, when they did fencing, you know, and I, I do mean the sort of sword bouncing around on a, you know, nice piece of uh, usually sports hall flooring, I would always, always just hold my ground. Because I found very quickly on, if I tried to charge my opponent at the beginning of a match. I didn't have a gauge on them, and if I'd done this before and I knew they were particularly timid, then maybe charging them was a sensible idea to do, but there are very few people who actually do fencing as a sport who are particularly timid. So, you don't. You wait for them. And sometimes I'd have them, there was one particular person I fenced against regularly, who was the captain of our squad, who liked to withdraw in front of the opponent to get them to charge at him. So I just hold my ground. And eventually he had to change his mind and come to fight me. Which meant he was already on the back foot. Now, he tended to still win. Yeah, there's cavalry behind you. Did I forget to mention that, do you gents? Thunder! Here comes the cavalry. Enemy general dead. And... Go take that one out. Go take... Continue. Let's just take this... Let's just win this battle now. Hello. You heard noises outside the door. Not my dogs. And that looks to me like F1. It 
it that wasn't a close victory that was a victory and there are a lot of American agents wandering around King George II side that's nine he's a fairly good king now the thing is that's got what's the kind of defenses that that's got big defenses Now, hmm. that should sort that one out, and that should sort that out. Can I get this done in about five minutes? Oh. Hi, Garthorn. Wow, they've got Pulasiki's Lancer Calorie. Those were good. I'm terrible cavalry, but wise, but I've got a huge amount of infantry. Finishing in roughly five minutes, yes, because then it's um the fluff time. For the floppies. And then at 7 I'm starting tonight's book review. Bilge pumps. No, brew ships. Brew ships. Bilge pumps. Bilge pumps will go... Um, will be out tomorrow. <sighs> hmm. Where's a good position to put my... In considering they've got... Very good cavalry in it. I'm going to position myself here, so I walk through the forest, and I can keep my cavalry here and here. And there are reinforcements, I think, coming. Oh good, I've got another general and I've got some artillery. Ah, a lot of artillery coming in.
Oh, yes. Artillery, position here, please. And infantry coming in. We'll position itself here. Dang, my heroic general has just died. But luckily, I have a very good general just arrived. He's also fighting. That's slightly more problematic. But luckily, he arrived just at the point to which they'd lost. Fire and advance. Yes, thank you. You have no nearby unit. Of course your cavalry are bad, you're playing British. Yes, I know, my cavalry are atrocious, but, you know, I try. Or rather, I'd like my cavalry to try. I have to say, this general is very brave. I'm not sure I would be getting this close to that many infantry.
I think that's enough troops to hold that position. And what can I do about you? Well, I can exempt you from tax. That should make you happy. I can exempt you from tax. That should make you happy for a short time. And... You're not going to have a good time. But it's now five past five, and I have to go take for a little wander. So I will say thank you very much for everyone for watching. Hope you enjoyed. And um, thank you for joining me for what is my, af my Sunday afternoon relax when I... I'm not technically, uh, as I, I claim to my family, this is not work. <laughs> See you on brew ships. Take care, everyone. And thank you for watching. Let's save this. I don't know. And it's, yeah. Doodles.